There is one component that has been given to the human being that I believe is not available in any other creature, maybe living creature, I mean the animals in the wild and the fish in the sea and uh, whatever, birds in the air. They have not been given one specific, unique aspect of creation. And that aspect is the aspect of being reflective, asking questions. And the human has been given exactly that. And you've got to ask yourself one question. Why is it that we as humans are reflective and the rest of creation is not? But then you also have to, have to juxtapose and ask yourself this question. How come that if you put the plant or a tree in the right environment, it grows to the tallest it ever can be? But the human himself struggles over and over again with very many limitations. And I want us to discuss in these episodes the most important thing about reflective questions in our lives. And let's see what we can learn. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. I believe that we risk being our better selves, the glorious selves, the magnificent selves that we were created to be, if we don't take this into consideration. We are created to be unique, we are created to be reflective, we are created basically to rule and to be in charge and to be leaders, to be masters of our own destinies. And it's basically being given the freedom to innovate, the freedom to grow, the freedom to be absolutely free with the, what pleases us and to rise up and become the better versions of ourselves. And that's why there will be revolutions upon revolutions upon revolutions in the human race. But I'm focusing on the individual life. Is there a revolution happening in there? And I can tell you this, that there will be no revolution in anybody's life. There will be no improvement in anybody's life, no growth in anybody's life. Who does not ask questions? Who is not reflective? Who does not analyze where they are coming from and asking questions about where they are supposed to go, where they could be? The problem is that we are so encumbered in this day and in this age with very many distractions and with this thing we call aching out a living or making it in life or putting food on the table to such an extent that we seldom stop the traffic to even think, even reflect and even decide to know, wait a minute, is this all there is to life? I don't know if you've ever asked yourself that question. Sometimes, by the way, that question sneaks up on us especially when we are in the throes of life and we are running from one place to another, trying to accomplish one thing or another. Probably you have excelled in one way or another. Maybe you've been given a promotion and you are happy and so on. And then that question just sneaks up onto you, asks you, is that all there is to life? Maybe you had a dream that one day I'm going to build my house and finally you build that house. The question comes back and sneaks up on you and asks you, is that all there is to life? And maybe you said, I'm going to buy a car, I'm going to buy myself my dream car. And, you know, I'm no longer going to be bipedaling. I'm not go no longer going to be walking on Route 11. And then you buy yourself the car or someone gives you the car and you're happy for a few fleeting moments. That's the, the sickest thing about life, by the way. An accomplishment comes and you're happy for a few fleeting moments. 
and then the question sneaks up on you once again and asks you is that all there is to life see i believe that we are creatures of purpose and as long as we are not going to answer purpose related questions i tell you we will run out of skills. I will accomplish this and accomplish that. But that question will still go unanswered. And as long as that question remains unanswered, we will not be fulfilled. We will not have the true joy and the true satisfaction because the reason for our existence is the reason for purpose. And we've turned the whole thing, flipped it upside down, and now we are looking at accomplishing things and accumulating things and being, you know, looked at as uh, being as if we are better than other human beings as compared to us. In that life, like I've said, fleeting moments of joy, few moments of joy. You know, you go into the boxing ring, you're the head, world heaviest boxing champion, and for 29 seconds you knock someone out and you ask yourself, is that all there is to life? We will only find fulfillment, friends, in this life that we've been given when we answer purpose-related questions. When you go back into our minds and we choose to be as reflective as possible with our lives. Otherwise, if we just live our lives on autopilot, they call it a life by default. And it's the sorriest lives there ever was. A life by default is a life that the river lives, if a river is living. It's a life that the fish in the sea live. It's a life that the tree in the wild does live. It's a life that the lion in the wilderness lives. It, it lives a life by default. It lives a life because it's just there, it's been put there to complete the ecosystem. But the human being is not here to complete the ecosystem. The human being is here to lead, to govern, to become the better version of themselves. You will not see a lion improving. Never. I mean, the lion will always be the lion, the king of the jungle. The elephant will always be that elephant that carries the truck. You will not see an elephant improving. But the human, the human is subject to improve. The human is subject to become better over the years and the biggest mistake we make is to stoop low to a start a school and want to walk into an autopilot mode and live a life of default but we've been created to live a life of design where we design things and we dream about things and we plan about things and we ask questions and we analyze life and we can see how better we can become and we harvest ideas in our lives and we run with those ideas. You don't see a lion harvesting ideas. You don't see an elephant harvesting ideas. You don't see a fish harvesting ideas. The fish will always be the fish in the water 1,000 years from today. But the human is supposed to be different. The human is supposed to use the seeds that have been put inside of that human and start increasing and developing and becoming be better and better in stature. That's the call of the human. To answer the call of purpose. And so I'm coming to us today in these few episodes to discuss the importance of being reflective. You don't see a lion being reflective. You know, how did I hunt yesterday? I could have hunted that antelope better. Maybe if I, I ran at uh, 61 miles per hour, I would have been successful. You don't see a lion do that. But the human has been given that goal and that responsibility to always become better, to always do things better. So let us not steep ourselves back into that life of living a life of default where we are just existing to complete the ecosystem. I don't think God in his magnificence will put a human being on the face of the earth to complete the ecosystem. We are not here to complete things, to complete the ecosystem. We are here to rule, to govern, to lead, to become the best versions of ourselves, to complement the things that God has created and to partner with the divine. We cannot do that with a dull mind. We cannot do that with a mind that doesn't ask questions, a mind that is not curious. 
a mind that is absolutely satisfied with what it's getting. That's why the mind of the human will always be given that question. Is that all there is to life? Is that it? Especially after you've accomplished something that is purpose unrelated. You ask yourself, is that all there is? So what? You've done this and this and this. So what? For as long as it is not connected to purpose, that question will always be lingering. However, when you do things that are purpose connected, purpose related, something else happens. There is joy. And you start asking yourself, how much more can we do? What else can we do? How much more can we give? How better can we become? And you're like, this is the most awesome life there ever was. There is basically nothing missing. And you're like, I need much more time. 24 hours are very few. I need much more time to do good, to become the best version of myself. <laughs> ah, that's the kind of life we're supposed to live, friends. Let me tell you that there is one major question that we're supposed to answer and I, I know I'm going to discuss several questions that we're supposed to answer in our lives but there is one major question that I'm going to discuss in the episode tomorrow that we are supposed to answer I believe every human being must answer that question in fact I believe the reason for the existence of the human being is to answer that question is I mean the question was there and we are the answer to that question. We are the answer. Let me tell you something. You are someone's answer. You are something's answer. You are an answer into this world. You are not a problem waiting to happen. You are not a question, by the way. You are an answer. If we come to the realization that I am a solution waiting to happen, or I'm a solution already happening, or I came here to solve problems, I came here to be a solution to the ecosystem, I came here to fix things, to create things, to contribute, to make an impact. Once you know that, it changes the way you live completely. It alters the whole ball game altogether. And so the questions we're looking for in life are no longer about how we can, you know, fulfill ourselves. It is questions that are going to help us to ask, how can we contribute? How can we make an impact? What answers can we be to what questions? That's how we're supposed to live. And when you live that way, I believe the fulfillment that we're looking for that normally evaporates in fleeting moments after we've accomplished something or accumulated something is going to go. It's going to be replaced by the fulfillment that comes because we live a life of joy, a life of purpose. We answer the question that we were sent. You were sent on this earth to answer a question. Now, I'm not talking about examinations. The problem with us is that we think questions are only for examinations and they're going to be graded, you know, 25% over whatever. You are an answer to a question, a particular question. And you're supposed to start asking yourself, what problem am I solving? What solution am I bringing? What kind of answer am I in creation? You don't find a lion asking itself that question. You don't find a gazelle asking itself that question. A gazelle just stoops down to eat grass and reproduce and eat grass and reproduce and evade the lions and that's just about it. Not you, the human. Don't be like a gazelle getting out of the house, going to look for work. Then you go and you do the work and then you come back into the house and you repeat the pattern for 70 years. And then they tell you to quote unquote retire. And then you expire out of this world in a whimper. The crown of creation going back to die. Accomplishing absolutely nothing but living a life of default. The same way the fish in the sea does. That is not your portion as a human being. So I'm challenging us to start getting reflective and asking ourselves these all-important questions. Be guided. I'm sure even as you're listening, I am absolutely sure I can bet a thousand dollars on this 
that at one point in time whoever is listening has always had that question asked of them in their spirits and in their hearts is that all there is to life and if you've had that question before chances are that you're supposed to rise up and watch and find out what solution you are on the face of the earth until tomorrow bye bye a special shout out to my mentor jeffrey howard of visionary business university found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast thank you jeff Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.